Thanks, everyone. I'm Eve Phillips, Director of Product Management at Google, and I lead the product team for CoreML Frameworks. We enable model builders to build, train, and deploy models accurately and efficiently. I'm excited to speak to you all today. This is just a short talk, but I wanted to provide a brief overview of how we see frameworks evolving as part of the overall ML ecosystem and set the stage for some of the other talks you'll hear here today. So first, let's take a step back. Frameworks were initially developed to make the math of building models easier. Developers typically started with a data set from which they wanted to extract insights in order to use those insights in their applications. To avoid the toil of doing all the deep learning math themselves, frameworks enabled much faster model creation. And then following the creation of that model, the frameworks evolved to assist in the deployment of the models to serve those applications. But as you all know, that was only the beginning. Not only did folks realize that the math could be productized into framework APIs, but actually the models themselves could be templated so that each model developer didn't have to start from scratch. Model builders started publishing those models, and as model hubs emerged to facilitate discovery and distribution adaptation of those models by other developers. For many folks, the requirements still necessitated using a framework to evolve the model itself to meet their needs, but is much less onerous than developing the model from scratch. For other use cases, emerging adaptation tools like transformers made the adaptation process even easier. And most recently, the launch of large models has changed the game yet again. With large models, the scale of the model is so significant that retraining those models from scratch with your own data is often resource prohibitive. So a whole new set of tooling has emerged to meet a variety of different use cases, from no-code prompt tuning to sophisticated fine-tuning techniques, to help harness the amazing power of those large models for a given set of requirements. And that's led to a whole new set of ML developers who actually never need a framework to integrate ML into their applications. They have a whole new spectrum of tools, some of which you can learn about in the other talks today. But then wait, what's the point of frameworks? Why am I still here talking to you? Because quite a few of you are still building models or have needs that require a framework to do the deeper adaptation of an OSS model. So frameworks still play quite an important role whether it's for the folks creating the new models, whether you know, within companies on bespoke data, or for OSS model hubs to enable other developers to adapt their model, or for those who need to work directly with the model to adapt it, or for those building the huge large models, which is something we've learned a lot about at Google, the framework choice will determine quite a bit about the experience of the developer using it, as well as the performance and scale and deployability of the resulting model. But as the models and the model building paths have changed, so have the requirements put on frameworks, where we might have just thought at one point about how the framework can ensure model accuracy and deployability, or how fast the developer could iterate on potential model versions, new requirements have emerged on more complex needs like mobile or web deployment and performance and scale in the face of large foundational models. So how can one framework meet all these needs? Here's the secret. One framework alone can't meet all those needs. Any single framework stack is going to drive trade-offs for the developer and the resulting models. But few developers want to become experts in every framework nuance, and even fewer organizations want to manage and maintain separate framework stacks within their infrastructure. So what's a developer to do? Well, I can tell you as the framework developer, we know from our own internal Google experience that a monolithic approach to frameworks doesn't work, which is why we have developed multiple frameworks over the years for different use cases, including, of course, both TensorFlow and Jax. And it's also why we're very excited about a new way of looking at frameworks, which is less about optimizing one framework stack and more about the enablement of a modular framework ecosystem. We believe model builders want choice across framework components to pick the best pieces across high-level APIs and framework cores and deployment modules that suit their particular needs. As one particular example of this approach, I'd love to call out the recent GA release of Keras 3.0, which now supports multiple backends not just TensorFlow anymore, but also Jax and PyTorch. So you can develop your model in Keras and easily port that model from one backend to another to meet your needs for different environments and different use cases. You're gonna hear more about Keras later, so I won't go into all the details, but we think this type of flexibility is critical for developers to keep up with user needs in a rapidly changing environment. And expect to hear more from us in this theme in the future as well. So hopefully this session has whetted your appetites to learn more. If you're interested in any of these model building and using journeys, I invite you to attend some of the great workshops coming up in this event. If you want to dive into the great new features of model building with Keras, please check out Divya's workshop. 
And if you're thinking about model deployment and mobile and the things to keep in mind there, I highly recommend Zoe Wang's session. Thank you, everyone.